Hi, this is ET250 Lecture 21. Uh, today we are going to continue our discussion on AC circuits and we're going to introduce this concept called impedance, which is just complex resistance. Uh, we'll bring up complex Ohm's law and uh, we'll have V equals plus or minus IZ. That should look very familiar. Uh, and we'll look at the impedance for different values or diff different systems the resistor, the inductor, and the capacitor. And notice here, the angular frequency does matter. And so the impedance itself is a complex number. Here you see real numbers. Here you see uh, a rectangular form with just J and imaginary parts. Here you see it in a polar form. Um, so we'll bring up all of these guys. We'll look at the intuition for Z, and then we'll uh, explore the simulation just so you can see what's going on in terms of the current and the voltage and the sinusoidal waveforms. Uh, we'll review how to co uh, combine uh, different uh, combinations of Z either in series or in parallel. And actually we can just treat them like resistors. You add them up in series and when they're in parallel, you have their reciprocal. And the last thing we'll do is take our knowledge here and bring it back to our low pass and high pass filters. Because remember these were in, uh, what do you call it? In an AC world and they were dealing with capacitors, resistors, inductors. And so we will bring in the concept of Z and see how we can get those Bode plots, right? Before we just kind of like, well, here's the plot. Now we'll actually show you where those plots come from for both the gain and the phase. Okay, so impedance Z, a complex resistance, all right? So that's the idea I want you to have. And it can be built with a combination of resistors, inductors, and capacitors. It's still units of ohms, and later we'll do a unit check just to make sure. Um, and so we can treat a resistor, inductor, capacitor, or any combination of these three as a resistor. And that's the beauty of all this complex math and the AC waveforms. Um, we don't have to worry about V equals L, D, I, D, T, I equals C, D, V, D, T, and writing all these cosines out. We get to just stay back into our original world where all our original DC rules can be applied. KVL, KCL, nodal, KD, uh, current divider, uh, voltage divider, Thevenin, Norton, superposition, all these things come back, um, but we're now in the phaser world, okay? It's very nice. And so Ohm's law, what do we have? V equals plus or minus IR, right? Passive sign convention. Well, now we have V equals plus or minus IZ. And it's the same rules apply. You define current going into the positive terminal, then you're gonna use the positive. You define current going out of the positive terminal, you're gonna uh, define negative. And you might go, well, what is it? If AC, does it matter? Why do we have to put the reference uh, arrow in the polarity? Well, you gotta think, what happens if the current is positive? At the moment in time when the current is positive, which way is it going? And if you don't have the arrow, you don't know which way it's going. Same with the voltage. If the voltage is positive or negative, which way is the, is the positive or negative gonna be? Is it gonna be a positive charge on the top or the bottom? So that's why even in an AC world where you might think it doesn't matter, if we're gonna actually dive into some analysis, it does matter. So you would wanna put the polarity of the positive, negative in the current, okay? All right, so let's uh, let's dive in. Let's just straight up look at the uh, impedance for a resistor. And this fact, these facts here on the right, upper right, you just have to memorize. So the impedance, or we'll call it ZR, of a resistor is just the resistance itself. Super easy. This is in rectangular form. So really, it's R plus zero J. ZR in this case is R plus zero J. Okay, that's rectangular form. It just doesn't happen to have any Y component. And the magnitude, well, that's pretty easy. The magnitude is equal to R with an angle of zero degrees, right? It's the same thing I've written. And if we were to look at it on the complex plane, it would look like this, okay, with a length of R. So here's your real and imaginary, okay? Here's the system, right? If you have some voltage and you have some current and some resistance, that's what it is. And we can now apply our complex Ohm's law to this. And we see V equals plus IR, right? Because the current is going to the positive terminal. And so we get something like this. V equals plus IR or Z equals V over I. It's the same thing, right? V equals plus IZ, right? Or I uh, ZR is equal to V over I, same thing, okay. So we're here and we go, okay, what does this mean? Well, don't forget the, the voltage is a phaser, right? And the current is also a phaser. The voltage here is actually some magnitude of voltage with an angle. And same with the current, some magnitude of the current with also its own angle, 
okay? So we can apply, remember our, our manipulation rules? If I divide phasors, what do I do? I divide the magnitude, but I subtract the phase, okay? So what, what do I get? I get V over I, and I get theta V minus theta I. And what we're saying is this is equivalent to this. Okay, well, whenever we have phasor equations, you really have two equations. Whenever you have vector, remember phases are just vectors. When you have a vector equation, you really have two equations. You either have the X and Y component, the real and imaginary, or you have the magnitude and direction. Okay, so don't forget that. Okay, so what does that mean? If we have two equations, well, well, the first equation is the magnitude relationship. R equals the magnitude of V over the magnitude of I. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. That means the amplitude of the, if, if we held this voltage uh, amplitude constant, then the current amplitude is just scaled by R. Good. Or the R, you could think of the R is, is equal to the ratio of the voltage over the current magnitude. No problem. Okay, what about this zero degrees and theta v minus theta i? What this is saying is, uh, first of all, there's no dependence on frequency. Frequency doesn't matter. It's not changing this relationship at all, right? And also, there is no phase difference between theta v and theta i. That means that both theta v and theta i are in sync. Okay, and so what does that look like? So let's say we had a resistance of two ohms. Well, what that means is that the current is half the voltage, right? Okay, or the voltage is double the, the current, same thing. And you would see something like this, where the voltage and the current are in sync. There's no phase leading and lagging relative to each other. And the voltage is double the amplitude. No problem, okay? And I and B are in phase. So this is the idea for our very simple pure resistor in an AC world. Okay, so now let's go to something more complicated. Let's go to inductor. So we have an inductor. Now this equation, you're just going to have to remember it, right? There's no getting around it. But it is coming from our inductance water wheel. It's the physics. It's the physics of the inductor. And again, I have the same situation. I have B, I have high. We have complex Ohm's law. The same equation holds, right? Now for ZL, it's J omega L ohms. Or you could think of it if so remember, this is, so if I write this out, ZL equals zero plus J omega L, right? It's a, this is a rectangular form. And if I were to draw it on the complex plane, what do I have? I have ZL equals omega L angle 90 degrees, right? As I have here. And if I were to plot that on the uh, imaginary and uh, real plane, I would have omega L pointing straight up with the length of omega L. You guys see that? Okay, so now it's a little more complicated. Let's try to parse this out. Well, this part is still true, right? I'm still doing V over I on the right side. But what about the left side? Well, it's just this, okay? I can just take this version, okay? Oh, okay, not too bad, not too bad. And again, it's a phasor equation or a vector equation, and I can compare the magnitude and phase. So the magnitude is this guy, and the phase is this guy. So let's look at the magnitude first. Omega L equals V over I. And what does that mean? What does that mean? Let's think about it. Well, it's saying that the frequency matters. The frequency, how fast these voltages and currents are oscillating. Remember, they're both oscillating at the same frequency. That's our assumption. The frequency matters. And with more frequency, there is more electrical impedance, more electrical complex resistance means the same voltage, I get less current. And let's think about that. So we had that physics water wheel, right? Okay, so if you had a, if you're trying to oscillate this very fast for the same amount of pressure going back and forth, back and forth, but you're trying to make it oscillate very fast, it goes, no, I don't want to send any current. It's it's too difficult, right? If there's inertia, right? However, if this frequency is very, very small, close to zero, it's behaving like a short. And we remember steady state analysis, we get a shorted behavior for low, low frequency, low omega, low impedance. That's what it means. Now, high frequency, and we get high impedance, and the inductor behaves more and more like an open, okay? So that's the, that's the feeling that I want you to have for this guy. All right. What about the phase? 90 equals theta V minus theta I. So we look at this and we go, wow, what does that mean? Theta V minus theta I is 90. Hmm. 
So we know theta v is greater than theta i to get that positive number. And we know that theta v, that means it has to lead theta i or equivalently theta i lags theta v by 90 degrees, which is a quarter cycle. So let's assume omega l equals one, right? We'll just assume it. And we would get something like this. Notice how v is leading i by a quarter period, quarter cycle, right? You could equivalently say i lags v by a quarter cycle, a quarter period, all right? Those are both equivalent statements. So if we were to plot the voltage here and the current here for an inductor, you would better, a pure inductor, you better expect something like this, where the current always lags the voltage by 90 degrees. Okay, good. All right, what about a capacitor? What about a capacitor? Well, remember this whole dual business where if you memorize one, you memorize the other, right? Well, if you memorize the inductor, look at the capacitor equation. It's very similar, except this is the inverse. J omega L, one over J omega C, okay? Again, we have a capacitor plus or minus E, and then we have the I, okay? Complex Ohm's law comes into place now, but let's, let's play with this a little bit. We have one over J, and if you recall our property, if you bring the J upstairs, you gotta make a negative. Okay, good. And what does this mean if I were to convert it over to uh, our polar form? So we have one over J omega C, which equals to minus J over omega C, which means that it is pointing negative J. What is negative J? That's pointing straight down. So that means the phase is pointing down negative 90 degrees. So that is the ZC. ZC, where this is the ZL. Notice the difference, okay? And so it would be pointing straight down with a length of one over omega C, okay? Not too bad, not too bad. So let's plug it into our Ohm's law. So again, the right side is still the same, V over I, theta V minus theta I, but now we have one over omega C in an angle of negative 90 degrees, okay? So if we compare the magnitude, we get V over I and one over omega C, good. And uh, what is that telling us? That tells us that as the frequency goes up, if you have a capacitor, right? Here's a capacitor right here. If you have a capacitor, and if I have some voltage across the two, oh, I shouldn't do that. That's actually poor practice. Touching the two terminals of a capacitor. Oh, we know it's uncharged, but don't do that in practice. <laughs> okay, all right. So you have the two terminals, let's say, of a capacitor, and you're increasing the frequency across this, uh, these two terminals via the voltage, right? What it's saying is, as the frequency goes up, the impedance goes down. The Z, the resistance goes down. So you'd actually pull more current the faster you go, kind of like a high pass filter kind of behavior. Interesting, okay? And vice versa is true. As you go slower and slower, it becomes more like an open, right? So low frequency, high impedance, right? Remember that steady state capacitor behaves like an open, high frequency, it behaves like a short. No problem there. Okay, now what about the phase? Minus 90 equals theta V minus theta I. Well, it's just the opposite of this. All it's saying is that in this case, it's, it's whatever this one, but it was opposite. Here, theta V minus theta uh, is greater than theta I. Here, theta V is less than theta I. So what you could say is theta V lags theta I or theta I leads theta V. So it's the opposite of the inductor situation. So what would we expect? Let's say one over omega C is one, okay? So we have uh, just one ohm. Then we would see like this. We would see the voltage is now lagging the current or the current is leading the voltage, okay? So I, in this case, leads perfectly by a quarter cycle, okay? Not too bad. So if I were to summarize, if I were to summarize, I could say that Z relates two quantities, the magnitude of V and I and the phase of V and I. And that's what we're seeing here, the magnitude and the phase. We're also seeing that Z is complex. It's made of either a rectangular form where it has the real and the imaginary part. In this case, there's only imaginary for resistors only real, but if you have a combination, you could have both. Or you could represent its polar form just like this with the magnitude and phase, okay? So I can either put the angle of Z or theta Z, that's the same thing. Okay, um, complex Ohm's law also applies and we can go because we treat it like a resistor and we get this. And so in general, if you have Z, which is V over I, the magnitude of Z is equal to the ratio of V over I magnitude and the phase of Z or theta Z, okay, maybe, maybe I can write that here. So this is the same as saying theta Z, right? This is the same as saying theta Z, 
Okay, I'll write that in. So theta z is the difference between theta v minus theta i. Okay, so when if I look at, for example, let's let's go to uh, this one. You can say that negative ninety is theta v minus theta i. Right, it's the phase difference between the voltages and current. All right, and then the next page is just a summary of what we just wrote. So again, complex number, right? Um, it may depend on the angular frequency and for a resistor, we get this. Here's R, R zero J or R angle zero. And it looks like this on the complex plane. So when I see zero degrees for this impedance, zero degrees here, then I know that the voltage and current are not gonna have any phase difference. And I know that this R is just the ratio of V over I. I look over here and I go for an inductor, zero plus J omega L, okay? And ZL equals omega L angle 90 degrees, which tells me that I get a, uh, whoop, that's a capacitor, sorry. I get a theta V minus theta of 90, it points straight up. And what does that mean? As L or omega increases, I get more impedance. I get more current blocking for the same voltage, right? And uh, I get current lagging, good. And uh, for a capacitor, we get one over J omega C, which is the same as negative J over omega C, which is the same as one over omega C with an angle of minus 90 degrees. And what is it saying? It says that the current leads the voltage. And it also says that if I increase the capacitance and I increase the frequency, because they're in the downstairs, I actually get more current because I get less impedance. Interesting, more capacitance or more frequency makes it behave more and more like a short, right? Interesting, interesting. Whereas here, less frequency and less inductance makes it behave more and more like a short. Okay, kind of remember that dual, okay? All right, so this is a good uh, summary of what's going on. Um, let's look at just a quick unit check and then I wanna go and uh, look at a simulation, all right? Okay. Don't forget, Z is always in ohms, not Henry's and not farads. For the resistor equation, it's easy to see, right? Ohms. But what about this omega L? Does omega in radians per second times L, which is Henry's, equal an ohm? Well, let's double check. Okay. So what equation do we have for Henry's? Well, Henry's, we can have our nice V equals L di dt equation. So we know that a Henry equals a volt second per amp. Henry equals a volt second per amp. So if I can take a volt second per amp and replace in here, what do I get? I know I get the seconds to cancel and I get volts per amp. Well, we totally know by Ohm's law, a volt per amp is an Ohm, yay. What about for a capacitor equation? One over mega C, so what do we have? One over radians per second times a farad, right? Radians per second times a farad. And we can use our capacitor equation, I equals C dV dt, which means that, what do we have? A farad is an amp second per volt. So kind of the opposite of this, not a volt second per amp, but an amp second per volt. And I plug it in, what do I get? Amp second per volt, seconds cancel, I get an amps per volt on the bottom, which is a volt per amp on the top, which is an ohm. So yes, the units for all three of these better come out to ohms or electrical uh, uh, resistance, right? Okay, um, let's go to the simulation and just double check all the theory. So let's just review real quick before we go to the simulation, let's go look at this in phase for resistor, right? Zero degrees. For an inductor, what do we have? Current lags voltage, because we have this 90. And for increasing omega, we get less current for the same voltage. Here, for a capacitor, we have current lead voltage, right? And for increasing frequency, we have more current for the same voltage, because it's in the downstairs, okay. With that in mind, hold that in your brain, and let's go to the simulation and double check out some, double check some of these things. Okay, so I'll go back here and, uh, Let's go to this one. Okay, so we're here in the simulation and I have an AC system and I have an inductor and a resistor. And if I look at just the inductor, which I'm plotting the voltage and current across the inductor, let's run it. Look at this. Look at the current in yellow and look at the voltage in green and notice the current lags the voltage. Good. I can also go here, view and scope, which, which plots the voltage and current of just the resistor itself and look at the voltage and current. They are in phase, they are in phase. That's nice, that's nice. Okay, um, look at what else can we do? What's nice about this uh, circuit simulator is you can go to AC circuits and type in capacitor, right? 
So now look at the capacitor. The voltage and current of the capacitor is such that the current is now leading. Look at the yellow. The current is leading the voltage by 90 degrees or quarter cycle. And again, if we still plot view and scope the resistor, what do we notice? Still, even though it had a capacitor hooked up to it, it doesn't care. If I look at the voltage and current of its own self, then it's still in phase, okay? All right, so what else can we look at? So if we go to AC circuits, look at this. What do we have? We have inductors with different frequencies. Okay, so we have 30, 80, and 200. Now, what did we think? We have omega L as our, omega L as our uh, impedance. So the increasing frequency better get less current. So we have, look at the same system, 200 and 400 millihenries, right? All the same system, just different frequencies. So, and then let's just double check, check the voltage. Five volts amplitude, five volts amplitude, and five volts amplitude. So they all have the same voltage amplitude, all have the same resistance, all have the same inductance. The only difference is this is oscillating slower than the rest. So if we look at the voltage and current of this inductor, which is plotted on the left, what do we notice? 23 milliamps. And as we increase the frequency, nothing else, just the frequency, notice the amplitude we see a smaller amplitude because the frequency went up because this inertia like water wheel goes, uh, uh I don't wanna change as much, right? I, I, real, I don't like changing. So it takes more time to switch its direction, which means less current is flowing through. And the last one here at 200 Hertz, we see this, look, nine millihenries versus 23, or so, sorry, nine milliamps versus 23 milliamps. So even less current. What I can do is actually I can combine them, watch this, uh, so that you can see it visually combine combine and you can see uh, now both the frequency changing and the amplitude changing. As I go through from the big one here, big current here, down to the high frequency little current there, you can see higher frequency but less current amplitude. Okay, We can do the same thing with the capacitor. So let's go here, circuits, AC circuits, they have capacitors with various frequencies. And it's the same idea. We have low to high frequency, we have same voltage, uh, amplitude, same resistor, same capacitor. And uh, let's run this. And what do we say? One over omega C is, is uh, the impedance. So that means with higher frequencies, we get more current. Okay, so here we see that we get 12 milliamps over here with the slow frequency. But as we increase the frequency, notice the current amplitude is increasing, right? So all the way from 12 to 20 milliamps to 23 milliamps, okay? And again, we can combine this, watch this, combine and combine and look at this. Notice how the slower frequency one has a smaller current amplitude. The faster frequency one has a higher amplitude in red here. And then the fastest frequency in orange has the highest amplitude, okay? So the inverse is in play, okay? Kind of nice. So hopefully this really hits home how frequency, capacitance, inductance is going to change the magnitude and phase relationship between the different types of circuits, whether it's a resistor, inductor, or capacitor. Um, is there anything else that's kind of interesting here? Um, I think, let's, let's try this. Interesting, look at this. They're plotting, look at this, all the same frequency. Uh, you have a resistor, you have an inductor and capacitor. They've tuned it so you have the same magnitude, but let's look at the phase. Notice the phase of, um, of the current for the resistors right in the middle. Notice the phase for the current of the inductor is lagging and notice the phase for the capacitor current is leading. That's all consistent with what we just saw. This is, this is kind of a nice little plot, okay? All right, now, because there's a resistor in the way here, it's not perfectly 90 degrees, right? It's not perfectly 90 degrees plus or minus, but you do have a leading and lagging situation. When you're more capacitive, you're more leading, and when you're more inductive, you're more lagging. Very cool, okay. All right, so let's go back to uh, the doc here. All right, so, that over here. Now let's say we're going to combine uh, impedance. Well, what can we do? Like I said, treat them like resistors when they're in series and add them. So if you had R and L and C, you could just do this. 
ZR equals R, ZL equals J omega L, ZC is one over J omega C. The equivalent Z is just the addition of all three, bang. Now you could play with some imaginary number kind of manipulation and denominator and all that stuff, bring that J upstairs and all that good stuff. But that's the idea. What about a parallel? Well, same thing, you add the reciprocal, right? So one over R, one over J omega C, one over one over J omega C. No problem there, okay? By the way, this would be Ohm's inverse, right? Okay, but no problem. Okay, let's move on to low pass and high pass filters and recall, for a filter, G equals V out over V in, right? And we also recall that G changes both the magnitude and phase. And if, if you forgot about, you know, what's going to go back to that YouTube lecture um, on the high pass and low pass filters, review it first, come back to here, right? But what we saw was without giving any proofs, we just said with a low pass filter, if the input os uh, is oscillating very slowly, the output is also matching the amplitude. If the input is oscillating fast, the output is decrease in magnitude and also phase lag by 90 degrees, right? And vice versa for a high pass filter. And we also remember that we had for a low pass filter, this was a capacitor implementation. We could also have an inductor implementation, but uh, let's just look at the capacitor for the sake of time. So let's use our new impedance complex Ohm's law rules to see if we can get a relationship between V out and V in, okay? And let's see if we get consistency in our intuition. So now what do we have? ZR is R, ZC is one over J omega C. Okay, good, no problem with that. And uh, what do we have? We have uh, VI, which is over here and V out, okay. So we can use our voltage divider. This is so cool. Remember, we are in our phaser world now, but we get to bring in our old rules. So it's like two resistors in series. This is neat, right? I don't have to write in uh, VI equals cosine, you know, VIP cosine omega T plus state of I, and then V out is VP cosine omega T plus state. Ugh, horrible. I can just treat it like, a, like our steady state analysis and then all the R's and C's become, um, what do you call it? Just uh, R's, that's really nice. So V out equals the resistance or impedance of the capacitor over the sum, very cool. Okay, now I can plug in this stuff and it gets a little bit hairy, but it's not too bad. One over J makes C, one over J makes C, okay, good. And this is going to be that G, by the way, this term here, because look, that V out over V, uh, V out over V in. Okay, so this is going to be our G. Okay, can we play some tricks with this? Well, we can. Look, if I multiply the top and bottom by J omega R, J omega C, what do I get? Well, this is going to cancel to one, and this is going to be the bottom, right? Because because this is going to cancel to one, I get J omega R C. Not too bad. So that's our G. Okay. Well, remember, this is like a phaser, right? Phases are just vectors. So there's really two things. There's the magnitude and their phase, right? Or the real and imaginary, okay? Okay, so how would we combine this? Well, here's a, a way to do that. I can make the top, remember, I'm dividing kind of complex numbers. Easy to divide it when it's in magnitude, uh, polar form, right? So what's the, what's the top? Well, it's one, it's a real number. So that means it's one with an angle of zero. Don't forget that. And what's the bottom? Well, the bottom, what, how do I get the magnitude? Remember, if this is the uh, x-axis and this is the y-axis, well, Pythagorean theorem. So one squared plus omega rc squared square root. And what about the uh, angle? Well, it's the inverse tangent of the imaginary part, no j over one, right? And no j here, good? Okay, so inverse tangent of omega rc over one and Pythagorean theorem, okay. And I can just uh, take the derivative. Okay, so I have one over the square root of one plus omega RC squared. And I have, remember when I, when I um, divide phasers or divide complex numbers, I have to subtract the phase. So minus tan inverse of omega RC. Okay, not too bad, not too bad. And I look at this and I can already see, look at this, I can already see as omega increases and decreases, I'm gonna change the magnitude of G, which is gonna change the magnitude relationship of V out and VI. Okay, I can already see when omega goes very, very, very low, look what I'm getting. I'm getting one. And that makes sense for a low pass filter, right? When I, omega gets very, very large, look at this, this whole thing uh, goes to zero because I get one over infinity, right? And so I, I get the low pass filter behavior, no problem. Okay, that's nice. Well, what about the phase? Well, I look at this negative 10 inverse. And remember, what did we say about the phase for a low pass filter? 
when everything is low frequency, then they're in phase. And when it's high frequency, it's shifted by 90 degrees. The output lags the input by 90 degrees. Let's, let's review our tan inverse and let's see if we can uh, mathematically see that same result. Okay, so for tan inverse, well, let's look at tan. Tan is opposite over adjacent, okay? And so remember, here's our triangle. Here's an angle opposite over adjacent or imaginary over real, no problem, okay? So what would that look like if I just plotted that? Remember, as that angle gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the opposite gets huge. So you shoot up really high as you approach 90 degrees. But then as you uh, get smaller, opposite gets smaller, then that angle also gets smaller. So tan of zero is zero, tan of 90 goes to infinity and it kind of spirals down on the other side, right? Okay, what else does that mean? Well, what if I want to look at the tan inverse? So I just want to flip the axis. Well, it's just like flipping about this diagonal here, right? Okay, no problem. 90 degrees here, it shoots off to infinity and it goes to zero, right? But this is theta now and that's tan, tan theta. Okay, so this is really the tan inverse, right? So if I know y, which is tan theta and I can find tan inverse, no problem. And what about negative tan inverse? Well, now I just flip it over here. Okay, so this is gonna be the important part, right? Because this is as negative tan inverse goes as a function of y, right? Okay, good. So what do we notice about as negative tan inverse gets, uh, the argument of negative tan inverse gets bigger? Well, we get from zero to minus 90. Okay, let's remember this. Let's remember this. So the magnitude of G is one over this part, V out over VI. And like I said, we already can see that that is matching a low pass filter. High omega, this goes to zero. Low omega, this goes to one. Now for this one, the negative tan inverse of omega RC is the phase difference between the output and input. And so let's look at what happens. As omega is small, we're here, okay? And the magnitude of G is one and the phase of G, which is the minus tan inverse is close to zero. And as omega gets larger, which is already right here, it's like saying this argument gets larger. What happens? The angle of G becomes closer to negative 90. That mathematically now should be consistent with our theory. So, so this shows you how we went from uh, our first lecture on low pass filters and just getting the intuition of what's going on. We saw it in the simulation, right? You did it in the lab. Now we're giving you the theory behind it, right? And what did we use? We used our new impedance rules, ZR equals R, ZC equals one over JMXC. Used our voltage divider rule, which we learned in month one. And, and then just crunched a little bit of complex math that you learned from high school. And then re recalled that if you do a phaser, right, division, then you just divide the magnitude and you subtract the phase. And then you reviewed our little bit of high school stuff from tangent review, right, okay? And then we get that same similar result. So we're seeing intuitively, we built it by hand, and now we're seeing it mathematically. Kind of nice, all this stuff is all connected, okay. Now, let's look at that cutoff frequency. Remember that cutoff frequency, right? Um, well, maybe I'll show you the Bode plot first and then bring up the, the cutoff frequency, okay? So if you recall, this was the Bode plot. Maybe this is a little lot, but you had the Bode plot of the low pass filter, okay? Um, so remember at low frequency, you have zero dB. Zero dB corresponds to a gain of one, okay? And then what? it falls off and this cutoff frequency is kind of this transition point. This is this half power point, right? Where G itself equals one over root two or 20 log base 10 of one over two corresponds to negative three dB. But this was the half power point. Again, go back to that uh, high pass, low pass filter logarithm uh, lecture and you, you can see this. And we had the minus 20 dB per decade. So this is straight out of that lecture, okay? But let's talk a little bit about this cutoff frequency. We kind of like brush that under the, you know, under the rug on that last lecture. We'll bring that back up, okay? And then for the phase, if I plot, if I plot the logarithmic version of the negative tan inverse, I actually get this. I still get zero to minus 90, but I get this kind of nice curve. And at the cutoff frequency, you're, this, it's kind of this transition frequency right in the middle, you're getting minus 45 right in the middle from zero and minus 90. That's kind of nice, right? So this is a low pass filter, low frequency, gain of one or zero dB and a phase difference of zero. High frequency gain of zero, right? V out is zero even if VI is non-zero and a phase lag from the V out of minus 90, good. And at the cutoff frequency, we're right here, okay? So, 
if we look at the cutoff frequency, I want you to think of the cutoff frequency as the transition frequency, right? And it corresponds to this half power uh, point where the gain is minus three dB or one over root two. Okay? And then for our case, let's double check when that occurs. So we had our magnitude relationship of, what do we got? Let me, right here, this one, one over the square root of one plus omega RC squared, okay? which equals one over root two. Well, how do I get root two on the bottom? I get square root of one. Well, I want this to be essentially one. Okay, you guys see that? So when omega RC equals one, I am gonna get one over root two. So that's one over RC here, okay? All right, recall the time constant actually equals RC. Remember that? Time constant. So we actually have the cutoff frequency. If you know the R and C in your low pass filter, you know the cutoff frequency and you know the time constant. That's a convenient little fact right there. So now the time constant was what? The time it takes to get E to the minus one, but it also if in a low pass filter case is the cutoff frequency. That's kind of cool. If it's a LR implementation, then omega C equals R over L. And remember from your first order problems, omega C is kind of like negative S in the E to the minus S T form. Remember that? Okay. So hopefully just exposing you a little bit more to all the stuff that we kind of brushed under the rug in the previous lecture. Okay. If we look at the high pass filter, remember all we did was we just flipped the, we looked at the voltage across the R as the output right? So we can still play the same game. Voltage divider, V out equals VI times, treat this like a resistor and treat this like a resistor, ZR over ZR plus ZC. So let's compare it to the, uh, the other one. What do we have here? Let's compare it to this guy here, okay, where this had ZC over ZR plus ZC. And then what do we have? So notice the difference. So here we have R over R plus one over J omega C. Here we had one over J omega C. Let me be a little bit more careful in my C's so to not confuse them with L's, okay? And uh, what do we have? I can multiply the top and bottom by J omega C, right? Because that's valid, that's like one. So I get J omega RC and J omega RC plus one because that'll cancel to one. And that's the new G, just like this was the G. Okay, and notice we have an omega RC on the top this time, right? Whereas here we didn't. But let's again convert these to polar form because it's easier to divide in polar form. So we have a J here, we have omega RC, which that means it's a 90 degrees. It's pointing, this numerator is pointing straight up and this denominator has a magnitude Pythagorean theorem and a phase of what? Inverse tangent of omega RC over one. This denominator looks exactly the same as that denominator. Good. This numerator is the only difference. Okay. Okay. What do we have for the incomplete picture? Remember, you have the you divide these to get your magnitude, you subtract these to get your phase. Okay. Look at the difference. High pass filter, low pass filter. Um, looks like the phase for the low pass filter, or is that, sorry, the high pass filter is just the same phase as the low pass filter, just shifted up by 90 degrees. Now that's easy. And look at the magnitude. The only difference here is I have omega RC in the numerator. Hmm. What is that going to mean? When omega is low, this whole thing goes to zero, right? This goes to zero, this goes to zero. So you get zero over one, which is zero. That's good because for a high pass filter at low frequency, you get low gain, which means you get no output for the same in, for a non-zero input. Okay, good. What about for super high frequencies? So when omega goes to infinity, so these are oscillating very, very fast. Well, look, these two numbers go infinite, infinite. You have infinity over infinity. If you take the L'Hopital you know, limit as this goes to infinity, what do you get? Well, you have infinity over infinity squared square root, which is essentially infinity and you get one. So that also makes sense that a high pass filter at high frequency passes the high frequency content. So V out equals VI at high frequency. Good. So the magnitude is telling us the same story. What about the phase? Well, here at low frequency, the phase was zero. Okay. But here, when this is zero at low frequency, this is going to be 90, which says that at low frequency, I get nearly no gain and I get a phase lead of 90 for the output, which is what we saw in the simulation. And then the same thing as omega gets higher, in this case, it was going to what? Negative 90. So if we have negative 90 plus 90 goes to zero, 
Okay, and so the Bode plot, um, and this is this is just summarizing what I just said, right? Okay. Okay, low frequency, no, no gain, leading, high frequency, gain of one, zero, locked in, no phase lag. And then the Bode plot looks like this, right? So no gain, high frequency, zero dB gain or one. And here for the phase, instead of this, it's raised up by 90. V out leads VI, good. And here, omega C has the half angle. So we got minus three dB, uh, sorry, the transition frequency omega C is minus 3 dB or one over root two. And over here, it's at positive 45 instead of negative 45. No problem, right? And I hope that all the math you're seeing now is not too bad because you already have the intuition. Now you're just kind of comforted with the fact that, oh, the theory is matching the intuition. That's kind of nice. And we'll just do one more. Why don't we just go and see if we can see the simulation just to kind of hit it home. So I'm going to go share screen. I'll go back to the simulation. Uh, let's go back to screen one. Okay. And so we can go to circuits, filters, and we can go to low pass filter, right? And let's run this guy. And remember, if you have a, a low pass filter, and I think what we can do is we can, can we uh, combine these? There we go. Look at this. If we combine these, you can see the output voltage in red as this frequency gets higher, starts shifting. Look at this. It starts shifting and the amplitude gets smaller. Perfect. And as the input frequency increases, notice the input frequency or input voltage maintain the same amplitude, but as it increases uh, or decreases in frequency, now the voltage of the output starts matching the input voltage and amplitude and uh, phase. Kind of cool. And let's go back to the high pass filter. So we go to passive filters and high pass filter RC. Yep, boom, boom, right there. Notice we just flipped the capacitor and resistor. And look at this, I can combine these. So hit combine. And if we notice the when, when the input voltage is slowly oscillating, the output voltage is nearly zero in amplitude. But as we increase in frequency, the output starts matching the input. And I'm going to pause it real quick. Also notice the phase at lower frequencies, the output is leading the input voltage. But as we get higher and higher in frequency, the output and input start matching in phase and amplitude. Nice. So all of this is hopefully consistent with your high pass and low pass filter understanding. All right, great. Um, I hope this was both a good review and a good introduction to complex numbers, complex impedance, uh, and the impedance for Z's uh, uh, for R's, L's, and capacitors. Okay, have a great day, and uh, see you later.